All right, welcome back everybody. It is the morning after um, I bagged the inner carbon skin into the fuselage and it sat under vacuum for about 14 hours. So the skin is still just a little bit green, but it's, it's okay to open it up. I just couldn't wait. So, so far looks pretty good. Now I didn't wet out the peel ply like you normally would put peel ply on and wet that out uh, because I didn't really, um, I really didn't want to go through the extra effort, honestly. I was really tired, so there's going to be a few spots that I have to sand, but so far, this is looking really nice. I'm I'm super happy. So here you can see this how the peel fly comes up. This is like opening a present, my favorite part. So, uh, so far, so good, and it looks like we're going to have a nice usable skin, so I'm going to keep peeling, and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's all done. All right, there we go. All the inner material cleaned out and I'm really happy it all pulled down really nice and um, I can't tell yet but I think it's gonna be super stiff so very happy with that now this left fuselage side is nearly complete I am gonna do one more step and that is I'm gonna put a layer of Kevlar from essentially where the firewall goes all the way back to just behind the cockpit bulkhead here and the reason for that is well, should I have an unfortunate event and hit the ground harder than I would like, that Kevlar will help contain the carbon splintering. So carbon has a, tender to, a tendency to turn into lots of little sharp knives when it fractures, especially under high energy. So um, just trying to do the best I can. Not gonna add very much weight and it'll add a whole bunch of peace of mind. So we'll get that done and then um, we'll do the same thing to the other side and then the next big step is going to be joining the left and right fuselage halves, which is you know, a little ways away, but that's where I'm headed. So stay tuned. I'll keep bringing you along for the ride. I cleaned up this mold. I just used a rag and some Windex and then went after it. Got two coats of wax on it. And you can also see I've got all the tapes down for the joggles. So they're all done. So now it's going to get one more coat of wax. Um, I'll wax over the joggles, even though it's PVC tape and it releases fine. I like to just put one coat over the tape just to be sure. So put that coat of wax on, buff that off, and then it'll be ready to spray PVA on. And then that PVA will dry overnight. Tomorrow I will stop at the auto parts store and get some more primer because I'm out. I'll spray the primer on and then this side will be ready to infuse the outer skin too. So hopefully this side doesn't take as long as the other side now that I have figured the process out and I'm hoping to have the fuselage joined you know maybe in a couple of weeks so super excited about that can't wait to pop it out and see how it looks all right so we're infusing the canopy surround now and uh, most of it has gone pretty well I did have to make a couple of changes though originally I had the vacuum being pulled from the center there and you can see I've got some peel ply running out to hopefully transfer the vacuum but that actually didn't work very well so Last minute, I ended up changing the vacuum inlet over there. And so far it's worked fine, except that last little part right there is not infusing. So uh, I'm gonna keep after it. Um, everything else looks like it did really well, so it's all good. And um, we'll see if that works or not. So fingers crossed. All right, I had to let it run another maybe 10 or 15 minutes before, or excuse me, after I shut the resin off, but uh, you can see where I marked it, where it wasn't uh, infused, and it's pulled all past that now. So I'm confident that it's way past the trim line. So good to go. Now it's just going to sit overnight, and um, we'll unbag it tomorrow. All right, it's a couple days later, and the uh, infusion went well. Everything's fine. So I've already unbagged this, and I've already, already popped it out. So I'll just lift it out for you here to see. But... Um, I don't know if it's visible or not, but there's trim lines there. So the carbon's infused well past the trim line, so I'm really happy about that. Um, no core in this one. It's just four layers of raw carbon. And it's a little flimsy, but you got to remember that the canopy is going to get bonded in there. And then once that's in, it's going to get probably another layer or two around the inside just to seal the edge of the canopy to the surround. And then from there, um, I've got to figure out a little bit of structure. I haven't really decided how I'm going to hinge this yet. Um, the racer in me wants to just have it lift off with no hinges. But that's kind of a pain in the butt to handle, really. You know, you get out of the plane, you got to set the canopy somewhere. You're always worried about kicking it or scratching it or something like that. So 
I really think I'm leaning towards a side hinge. And um, the reason a side and lift off were the sort of leading candidates is because I wanna make sure that if something happens and I need to get out of this thing, that I can bail out. Now, if I have a, a rear hinge, it'll obviously lift off and, and tear away, which is fine. But that hinge is gonna interfere with my rollover structure, which is gonna go behind my head. So I think it'll be easier to hinge it from the side and then have just, you know, a, a fore and an aft latch. And um, I've already started messing around in CAD and I've got a, um, an aero shaft push rod bell crank latch system halfway designed. So I, I think that's the way that I'm gonna go with that. Uh, update on the fuselage side. So, you know, typically I I get working and I don't film, but you know, you guys have seen this before. So this layup is all completely done. Uh, peel ply is down, the uh, green infusion mesh is down, and, and what I'm doing different this time is I'm covering all the resin and vacuum channels with this breather cloth. Um, the bag that I use is a stretchy bag, which I love, but I found that it can I can pull so much vacuum that the bag actually pulls down inside the spiral wrap channel and it will actually cut it. So I've had to chase a few bag leaks, you know, mid infusion and even after it's infused and it's just sitting there under vacuum curing. So I'm hoping to cure that. Um, so this all is good and I'm gonna run the tacky tape around, put the bag down and then pull vacuum on it. And I usually let that sit for an hour or two to make sure that no, these crazy leaks pop up. And then I'll infuse it. So it'll be infused today. And um, maybe I will film that, we'll see. I, I have a, a GoPro with a time lapse on it. I might put that up so you guys can see the pro process of the resin migration. It's kind of neat to see. And I don't think a lot of people are super familiar with it. So if I can, if I can film that, I will. Okay, I've got the tacky tape on and the bag is all in. And uh, what I typically do is I, I put a couple pleats down the middle. It's got a pretty deep draw in here, so if I can leave a little bit of belly in the bag, it helps to draw it in. This bag stretches really well, so it's usually not a problem, but it's just sort of a best practice thing. So it's all ready to go, and uh, I'm pulling the vacuum out of the rim this time. Uh, last time I pulled it out down at the very end, and I ended up trapping a bunch of resin. So because that, that part saturated first, so it started pulling it into the vacuum line before the rest of it saturated. So I'm trying to avoid that. Um, still have a resin trap set up, and again, that's my little homemade deal. Pretty simple, it's just a jar with two pieces of hard line in it, and then I use the tacky tape to seal it up, and then that goes to my vacuum pump. So I'm gonna turn the vacuum on here in a minute and uh, chase any leaks I find and get it pulled down, and hopefully it goes well. I've never, especially on a complex, uh, shape like this. I've never got it to seal perfectly the first time. You always got to go around ch Chase a few things push things down, but eventually it goes So let me plug in the vacuum and let's see what happens All right, so pump is on It's already pulling on. I think I got a kink here though Do that So let's just see what she does here So that infusion actually turned into a nightmare. Um, I ended up with a ton of bag leaks. It was a giant pain in the ass and I actually thought I was gonna lose the skin. So uh, it didn't infuse all the way and what I ended up doing is actually re-infusing it and then I still didn't get everything. And so I ended up having to come back in a couple of spots and uh, like right in here I had to add some resin. No big deal, it all wet out, but um, what I've done here is I've gone through and sanded the whole inside of the skin. So. With those multiple layers like that and a few little overlap spots that I had to clean up and just making sure everything is good to go to start laying core in. So it all looks fine now, just a couple couple hours extra work that I really hadn't planned on or budgeted for, so that slowed things down quite a bit. 
So I got the honeycomb now and I'm gonna start throwing it in there and um, hopefully get that bagged in here today, maybe. All right, so the honeycomb core is all cut and fit. I didn't take any pictures of that or recording of that, but um, pretty simple. You just lay it in there and, and uh, cut it to fit. You've got to make a couple little relief cuts. And I was able to do it in, in basically two pieces. I had two full four by eight sheets. So I've gone in here and just marked around with a silver Sharpie where the core is going to go. And uh, it's all sanded. I'm just going to wipe it down a little bit with some acetone and I'm going to start spreading glue and then we will bag the core in. Okay, micro's all mixed. And this is what's left. This is about how thick I do it. Just where it'll just sort of run. And uh, there you go. All spread in. So we're good to go there. And I'll show you a little trick. Um, to get a nice even spread. I, I use these pinking shears and I just take a Bondo squeegee and cut it off. So it makes these nice little ridges and then when you squeegee the glue, it gives you a nice uniform depth. And if you look in here, you can see the teeth marks uh, where I've done that. Now, the places where you've done it a while back, like back there, it'll start to lay down a little bit, but um, this ensures you get a nice even coat everywhere and you're not putting excess glue in there. So, looks good. I'm gonna throw the core in. Okay, core is in place and um, it, it sticks pretty well once you have bedded into the glue. So you can kind of move it around a little bit and get it positioned. Um, once you get under vacuum, it'll pull everything down tight and then I don't pull it under full vacuum. I just do partial vacuum until I get everything in place and I can kind of move the edges around, straighten them out, all that kind of stuff. And then once that's done, I can suck it down good. So this all looks good. I'm gonna throw the bag on it and pull it down. All right, the bag is on and um, I got the core positioned basically where I want. And now it's pulling down to full vacuum. I can. I can get about 25 and a half inches here. That's about it. So uh, we'll start climbing towards that. And it all pulled down nice, so we're looking good. And if everything works out, we'll pull it out tomorrow. All right, pulled the bag off. And other than a few spots where I drug the bag through the glue and drug it onto the core, it all looks good. So a couple little spots like that I gotta fix. So now, the next goal is to um, sand all the edges of the cores down and trim them back to where they need to be. And then I will put the inner skin in. So we're making good progress. Okay, been a long day, but um, I'm gonna put the inner skin in today too. So edges have all been sanded back and mitered. Um, I've brushed a coat of neat resin in around the rim just to promote adhesion. And then the white is micro. Um, I went along and I just put a little bead all the way around. It's honestly probably not necessary, but um, it's cheap insurance and it doesn't weigh very much. So I'm under target weight for what I want right now anyway, so I'm good. I also put some between the seams of the core just in case it didn't glue down together properly there, but um, everything else is ready to go. I've got the carbon is all uh, cut to rough size and then put in between glass and then here are my paper templates. So what I'll do is I'll wet the carbon out between the plastic, put my paper template on top. Um, you can see this one I've already traced around it. There's the rough shape. This is the aft fuselage. So I'll wet that all out and then cut that to shape, pull one side of the plastic off, and then it goes into the mold. Um, and then obviously the top side of the plastic comes off and then peel ply over the whole thing and then put it under vacuum. So. Uh, yeah, good progress. Here we go. All right, I've got the inner skin in place and it's just sitting there kind of loosely. It's not, um, you know, pushed down all the way. You can see like right there, there's a little, not really a bubble. It's just not all the way stuck down yet because it's got a gun or a vacuum. So the next step is to cover it with peel ply and then put it under vacuum. So, so far so good. Like watch, we could push this down here. See, it's just not, it's laying on top of the core, so it's not all the way down. It'll look real nice. Uh, it'll look basically like all that when it's all done. Just turn the pump on and it's starting to pull down. It's, uh, it's pretty late. It's about 10 o'clock at night, so I have the vacuum pump actually outside. There's my pile. So uh, my daughter's bedroom is off the back of the garage, so I'm trying to be a little more quiet for her. She's got to get up early to go to work. So. Pumps outside. Um, this is drawn down, 
it's all looking good so i'm just going to sit here until it pulls full vacuum and pump shuts off but uh looks like this side's done i started to unwrap the present and uh it looks like we're good there's a couple minor spots right here where I didn't get peel ply all the way over, but that's no big deal. It just needs a little scuff, and then it'll be ready to bond. So, um, <clears throat> normally I, I don't record this part just because it takes two hands usually, but this is kind of neat. Um, this peel ply, it's the, it's the last thing to touch the carbon before any bag or whatever goes on. And what it's for, really, is not only does it make a uniform surface, but it pulls out any excess resin and leaves the surface uh, basically pretty close to being ready to bond. It might take a slight scuffing for the most part, but it saves you a ton of work. So, um, let's see if I can peel this in here. So there's another, this is in multiple sections, so it may not come off yet, there we go. So here's peel plied finish, and then here's a piece with peel ply still on it. Now you can see in some spots, it's, it's pretty tough to tell when it's still there. That's why I use this stuff with the red stripes and it makes it a little bit easier. So, so far so good. Okay, peel ply is all out and skin looks good. And you can see a few spots where it's a little shiny. I'll just hit that with some sandpaper. Normally I'll go in and, and wet the peel ply with another coat of resin over the top before I bag it. I didn't this time, be, mainly because I was lazy. I was just super tired last night and kind of done. i been out here all day. So um, a little extra work again today, but not a big deal. Um, I have to sand anyway. As you can see here, I didn't trim the lip exactly even with the mold. So I got my palm sander and my respirator there, and I'm gonna come back and sand this till it's even with the mold edge. And uh, the reason I'm doing that, well, there's a few reasons, but the main reason is um, when I bolt the left and right fuse molds together, uh, if this is sticking proud, it'll hold the molds apart. Won't let the fuselage mold clo close properly, which is not good. Uh, the other reason is I'm getting ready to put Kevlar in here and Kevlar is a real pain in the butt to work with. So what I'm gonna try to do is fit the Kevlar in dry um, with it without sticking proud. I'm gonna have it trimmed perfectly before I put the resin in. And that's so that I don't have to try to sand the, or cut the Kevlar after it's cured. It's a pain in the butt to cut when it's dry it's a real pain in the butt to cut when it's cured because the resin just frays and um, not very easy to work with which is exactly why i want to use it and exactly why bulletproof vests are made out of it because it's very tough stuff but can be a pain in the butt to work with so um, i'm gonna get suited up here gloves and my space suit and my respirator get all covered up and uh, start grinding on this carbon edge all right, so I've got all my edges trimmed up flush here, preparing for the join. And uh, you'll notice I did not put my Kevlar in yet. Um, I decided I really want to bond my bulkheads to carbon. So I'm going to wait to do the Kevlar until after the fuselage is joined and after the bulkheads are in. And that's going to be really a big pain in the ass, but um, this is a better way to do it and it's going to make me feel a little better. So anyway, I'm prepping the fuselage halves to join. Um, this side is just about ready to go. I gotta dig that one out, prep it. I prepped it mostly before I rolled it over there, so it shouldn't be too much, but the goal today is to uh, join the fuselage halves, so pretty exciting. Stay tuned. All right, in typical red fashion, I did a bunch of work without recording anything, so that seems to be par for the course, but I guess it's just how it is when you're one guy doing everything, so <laughs> I try not to get ahead of myself, and I try to do a good job of um, you know, bringing everybody along for each step, but you know, sometimes that just doesn't happen. So, uh, where we left off, um, the, uh, the fuse half, the second fuse half was done and, um, I trimmed that all up flush and I took it outside or I popped it out. If you saw the live video on Facebook, um, I popped the fuselage side out live and then uh, basically cleaned up both halves, drug the other molds out, and you can see that the uh, molds are now together and the fuselage is inside here. So I'm just getting ready to start seaming it actually. And I thought, hey, I better, I better record some of this because people might want to see it. So anyway, fuselage is in there. You can see the fit is, is very nice. So minimal gap between the left and right side. It all fits in nice and tight, super happy with that. Um, 
The plan is to seam the inside as much as I can, so I'm not sure if I can get all the way back in the tail cone. Um, I think I can today. Should be fine. Um, I've got my, here's my seaming stick here, so here's what I'm using to reach in there and see. So you can see it's just a roller on a roller stick. Um, get all the inside seamed today, and then, of course, I won't be able to wait, and I'll pop it out you know, tomorrow night probably, and uh, you know, just look at it, right? That'll be the first kind of real substantial part. So um, two layers of carbon around all the seams, and then the very, very tail end back here, um, I'm going to just put a little micro and resin back here, and then I'll wrap some carbon in there to close that out. That's a pretty low stress area back there. And uh, there's a tail skid. I think I can get the roller in there and get most of the bottom. And then through here, I think I can get the aft part of the top. So what I've done is I've just wet out some carbon here on my table in between cloth. Nothing special there. Everybody knows that technique. Um, I've got the laser set up there. It's actually on. I don't know if you can see the line or not, but that's just so I can cut semi straight cuts. And then um, I will show you how I reach in there and put the carbon in on the seam without creating a huge mess. It's kind of an interesting trick and somebody showed me a long time ago. So let me get that set up and I'll show you what I'm doing. All right, my strips are all cut, as you can see there. And then I wound it up on the end of my roller there, still with the plastic on it. And I will try to film or record a little bit of me actually rolling it in, but I, I may not be able to do that, Just not enough hands. But anyway, uh, basically you pull one side of the film off and as you roll it, uh, you peel the film off at the same time. So the top layer will stay on, the bottom comes off, you get it kind of stuck in place, then you can pull the top layer off and then roll it all down real nice. So it works out pretty good. Um, I'll see if I can maybe set a tripod up and see if we can't get some of this. As expected, it was a little bit more of a Charlie Foxtrot to try to seam and record all at the same time. So there's one done. Um, one thing I didn't show is I wet the seam with resin before I put the carbon in. It helps the carbon stay, especially on a vertical surface, doesn't want to peel away as you're rolling it on. So I'm going to keep going and um, I'll show you what it looks like when it's all done. All right, well, there it is. All seamed, top and bottom. And uh, back here, all the way to the tail close out. That's all done. Very tip is done. So if I were to do this again, I would not do it this way. I would uh, put it upright and actually the cart that I built for working on the mold upright and I would do the top and the bottom separately. So it's a bit of a challenge to work on the vertical walls, especially over the long runs to try to get the carbon to lay in there. But I did it, I just had to fight it. So it's all good, not without drama. There's my, uh, my seaming rig right there, which worked fantastic. So nothing left to do now, just to wait. And um, man, we'll, uh, we'll crack it loose and pull it out of the molds and take a look here shortly. All right, the seam's cured up nice and hard. That all looks good there. I've pulled the top mold off. Uh, it's just sitting over there for right now. And it's loose, so. I'm going to pop it out of here and we'll take a look. Well, there she is. Popped out super clean. And uh, obviously, I'm ecstatic. Man, it's been so much time and so much effort and quite a bit of expense to get to this point. But man, wow, it's real. That's really, really cool. So I'll take a look at it, maybe do a little bit of trimming on it. But this is actually short-lived. It's gonna go right back into the molds and I'm gonna start building the tail on it. So the tail's bonded on in one piece, so it'll get all fixtured up and stay completely straight while I build that. And we'll keep cranking. So thank you guys so much for the support and thanks for tuning in and check us out in the next video.